This video is sponsored by Racecrate. More info on them later on. So, back at the start of the year, I made a few videos on the rookies about to begin their first season in Formula 1. However, despite talking about Mick Schumacher and the world's best man at social media posts, one name I didn't touch upon was Yuki Tsunoda. Why was this? Well, honestly, I was really conflicted. Yuki had really performed in his junior career up to now. Though he made his fair share of silly mistakes, and in my opinion, I just thought he could have done with another year to mature before making that step up to Formula 1. That said, every time I tried to bring this point up in conversation, I found myself shut down quicker than most small businesses after the UK lockdown. And so, in the end, out of fear of F1 Twitter, I canned the project and instead kept on ripping into Mad Lad Maz here, since people seem to like that for some reason. However, a few months and five races later, I kind of wish I made that video. More just so I could tell everyone I told you so like some fatuous child. Hey there guys, I'm Will and welcome to F. P1. And after Yuki Tsunoda blasted onto the F1 scene in Bahrain, the man overnight turned into the next messiah. Hell, even technical director Ross Braun was hailing him as the best rookie he'd seen in years. Though since then, the Japanese driver has failed to score a point, and only made it out of Q1 on one occasion. Which just begs the question, what's going wrong with Yuki Tsunoda? So, it's a well-known fact that Yuki Tsunoda's journey to Formula 1 was a little different to the typical driver. And by that, it was just like any typical driver. Except on steroids. After some success in karting, Yuki started his single-seater career in Japanese F4, taking part in two races towards the end of the 2016 season. And the rookie would be strong out of the gate, finishing his first race on the podium and following that up with a P4 result in race 2. Now, in fairness, I can't really tell you how good the field is as I've never heard of any of these names before. That said, Yuki did end up beating a 54-year-old man known simply as Dragon. So there's something. This all garnered the attention of Honda, who signed Yuki on to their form of the Dream Project for a full attempt at Japanese F4 the following year. Yuki would continue his strong form, finishing third overall with three wins and six podiums. The Japanese driver would then go two better in 2018, winning the championship after a close battle with fellow Japanese racer Tepe Natori. Both Natori and Sonoda would graduate to FIA Formula 3 for the 2019 season, with Yuki's Honda Lynx leading to him selling his soul in return for a place in the Red Bull Driver Academy. Sonoda wouldn't get the luck of the draw when it came to teams, however, ending up stuck with Jenza Motorsport, who were basically the Formula 3 equivalent to a massive lump of shit. While Natori arguably got the better seat with Carlin, Yuki would still outperform his compatriot come the season's end, finishing ninth in the standings ahead of the likes of Logan Sargent, Liam Lawson, and God Amongst Men, Alessio De Leda. Though it should be noted here that his performances, well, they weren't particularly consistent. Despite three podiums and a win at the end of the season, Yuki endured long spells of either being really on the pace or really off it. Now, the fact that the Genza was, well, a Genza didn't help matters much. But as you'll see, this trend rears its head many times over the course of this young man's career. Before we do continue with that though, I'd like to talk briefly about the sponsor of this week's video. Race Crates are a brand new company that sells subscription boxes based around Formula 1. I myself have been in discussions with them for a while, and I'm super happy to announce their first limited edition box is on sale over on their website. If you don't know what subscription boxes are, basically every month you pay a set fee and a box full of Formula 1 related gifts arrives at your door. Inside are a range of different products, from t-shirts to artwork. For example, in their limited edition box, you can see I received a really awesome set of mug, a World Champions t-shirt, a Michael Schumacher inspired Benetton coaster, a Senna and Mansell artwork piece, which is also made it above my setup by the way, and also a collector's pin badge of Mr. Eyebrows himself. And if subscription boxes aren't to your fancy, then there's also plenty of other official and unique F1 merch designed by members of the community over on their website, which you can find down in the description of the video. And if you use the code WILL15 at checkout, then you'll get 15% off of that box I mentioned earlier. But anyway, back to Sonoda. So after his maiden year in F3, Red Bull decided to promote Yuki up to the next step in the motorsport ladder for 2020. Formula 2. This was not going to be an easy season though, with the likes of Mick Schumacher, Dan Tictum, Callum Eilat, and of course Chicken Man. <coughs> but Sonoda would make himself a talking point heading into the season, actually in a good way, unlike Mazepin this year. Yuki would put up a strong, consistent performance in the Toyota Racing Series at the start of the year, ending the campaign fourth in the standings. So the question was, could he keep this up into Formula 2? Well, he was able to capitalise on a strong end of the year to finish P3 in the standings. In the end, only 15 points behind eventual winner Schumacher. But though this looked really good at a quick glance, a closer inspection of these results threw up the same warning signs as before. Yuki would be quick on his day, 
but his results still showed some of those same patterns we saw in Formula 3. Periods of strong, consistent driving, but also periods of lacklustre results. And this time you couldn't blame it on the car either, with Sonoda contesting the season with an ultra-competitive Carlin team, who entered that year third in the standings. And you can add to this some rookie mistakes over the course of the year, such as losing one of the race wins in Austria due to not reading his pit board telling him to come in for a change of tyres. And it was little errors like this that cost Sonoda a proper chance to fight in the championship in those dying moments of the season. Nevertheless, his performances had still shown Red Bull enough to sign Sonoda onto Alpha Tauri, replacing Russian-based enthusiast Daniel Kvyat. And though you can see why this would make sense in a lot of ways, there were still those underlying problems all along. While you might argue that it doesn't matter how Sonoda did race by race if he ends the season third, you can't really get away with an inconsistent performance like that in Formula 1, especially when you're paired alongside Pierre Gasly, who is Mr. Consistent, unless he's in the Red Bull. So when we look now to Yuki's start in Formula 1, perhaps the results aren't quite as surprising as we maybe once thought, when the evidence has been on the wall for a fair while now. Yuki began the season well with a Q2 appearance in his first ever qualifying session, going on to finish the race in 8th place, beating out his teammate who decided to get a little too close to comfort to Daniel Ricciardo's McLaren in the opening laps. After this, Yuki would be on cloud 9, and probably even more confident given that the next stop in the calendar was Imola, a circuit where he and Alpha Tauri had shaken down that year's car, and everything seemed to be going to plan until it wasn't. Yuki would heavily bin his car in the wall before setting a single time lap in Q1, and though he performed well at the start of the race, he threw it all away with a spin on the restart. And since that point, Yuki's not really been the same driver. Sonoda would qualify 14th for the third round in Portugal, but since then has not managed to make it out of Q1 as a time of recording. A mechanical failure would halt any further progress in Spain, and with Monaco being Monaco, Yuki's poor Saturday performance hurt him massively come the race. Add to all this that we've seen Yuki get further and further frustrated on the radio over this period, and you've got to start to wonder, is the pressure of Formula 1 and the one-eyed Bond villain of Helmut Marco just a little bit too much for poor Yuki Sonoda? So after all that then, let's bring this background to the reason you clicked on this video. What's gone wrong with Yuki Tsunoda? And the answer is, well, nothing we've not already seen before. Yuki's performances over his career show a distinct pattern of strong spells, followed by, well, sh** ones. Thing is, when you get to Formula 1, everybody is watching, and everyone's analysing what you do. So this overall lack of consistency is hardly surprising. What we can take out of this though is that Yuki has bounced back from these periods of poor form before, and there's nothing to suggest that it can't happen again. I'd say he just needs to hit that metaphorical reset switch and get his head back into the game. Then again, if I were an expert, I'd just become a psychologist rather than screaming down my microphone in my bedroom every week. But in all seriousness, this seems to be what Red Bull are thinking as well moving Yusunoda to Italy and getting him onto a new training schedule. So I guess we'll have to see then what effect this has and whether Sonoda can find that Bahrain form once again. But either way, those were my thoughts on Yuki Sonoda. So be sure to let me know yours down in the comments of the video. I do try and read and respond to every single one, so it'd be really interesting to hear what you guys have to say. And if you did enjoy the video, there are plenty more like it over on the channel. Feel free to click on that big red subscribe button as well and ring that bell so you're notified of all my new uploads as soon as they're live. Finally, if you want to hear even more from me, then you can join the Discord community or drop me a follow on twitter links for which you can find in the description below but that's all from me so i hope you have a lovely rest of your week and i will see you all in the next one